So this is Michael J. Coyle with uh, Metal Temple, and I'm here with Peter from uh, Vader. How are you doing, sir? Uh, could be better. No, actually, no, I can't wait for a show in London because London always, always rules, you know, so I like that. But unfortunately, I get cold like two days ago and still get a bit suffering about that. And so I will survive that. <laughs> well, you're pulling through, and I guess uh, that shows at least that uh, the fans will see uh, that although yeah. you're not feeling so well, at least you're pulling through for the fans. No, there's a, there's a point of fine fans doesn't care. They should not care about that. And, you know, mm-hmm. I just here to perform good show. That's why I try to, you know, keep in shape mm-hmm. and just to be ready for the show. And just that <laughs> that's why I'm trying to rest before of course. to give all I can, like, on a show. So the last time you were in the UK was for the uh, Back to the Black shows, which was revisiting the first two albums, if I'm correct. Um... May I ask, during that, uh, during those shows, uh, what was it like to go back to uh, older material uh, as well as uh, material you've not played in such a long time, and now uh, with a new record out, uh, playing newer stuff compared to that? But are you talking about the, something we started just uh, two months ago? I uh, know it's like um, a few years ago. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, yeah, the, you mean the tradition? Uh, yeah. That's that's actually something different. But you're right; it's just actually the idea is the same. So you know, it's we uh, we're a band uh, kind of old, you know. We always uh, over thirty years old band, you know. So uh, we started in eighty three. So uh, now we play for probably the third generation of metalheads, and not everybody knows Vader from the beginning. So uh, of course. there was like two reasons why we started to bring back the you know the Vader from eighties. Uh, first is uh, uh, exactly what I just said. So. Uh, Mostly Vader fans, Vader maniacs who knows us since I say like the beginning of 21st century, uh, mostly from the last albums, you know, and nobody even like know that we started so early, and uh, you know that was a natural because we started behind the curtain, so in Poland, so, so we had to wait like a decade just to get to bear breakthrough. Of course. So actually, the first album recorded by uh, recorded for uh, Eric Records. In uh, 1992, that was like a first touch with mm. with uh, Metalstein outside of Poland, you know, like live. But of course, we had the demos that we like. Uh, we were sending it around, you know, spreading it around. Like, mm. but there's more underground, you know. So uh, the real thing started since we uh, we had a first tour with Bolter and Grave in 1993. That's incredible. And, but this is still kind of uh, old times, and uh, I still think that the, the, the last generation of metal has they know us most after, uh, you know, Impressions in Blood, you know, or all this kind of stuff, you know, for Vader. And the, the other reason is, uh, after so many years, we finally started like uh, the official Vader website in the middle of December last year, and uh, because we tried to bring back also uh, the old stuff, old material, like in a way it should to be in the past, you know, There's no chance to do something like them recorded on CD or vinyl, you know, in the yeah. 80s or 90s. So um, because we have opportunity, you know, we have a chance, and we have somebody with a passion. I mean, uh, Bartek Krishu is like uh, the owner of uh, yeah, the Witch Hammer Records, Witch Hour Records. So, uh, of course, this is pretty natural just to start with something which was the beginning for Vader, demo tapes. And uh, we made it, you know, very special. So this is even special to me because, for example, the, the demo, which was not even called a demo, this is like live recordings from 1986, it's called Life in Decay. Mm. It was something we were like looking for because every band is supposed to have a demo tape and that was the only thing and the only uh, recordings we had to use it as a demo tape. That's mm. why uh, at the end of the 80s I called this uh, the demo tape, but actually the first demo tape was Necros recorded in 89 with Doc after Doc joined the band. So actually that was the first beginning for Vader uh, known uh, as Vader now because what happened before you can listen in Life in Decay. So we're closer to Judas Priest than to Slayer. And uh, that's why it might be so, so maybe even shocking for some friends, you know, later. <laughs> Who knows us from blasting and this kind of stuff. The singer was different, man, you know, we were like singing in Polish those years, like, I mean, the beginning. 
Of course. And you know, uh, the Vader was still extreme, but extremity was different. You know, extremity, uh, extremity would mean fast and brutal. Started since uh, we are like pretty much influenced by the punk rock scene and bands like Slayer, or Anthrax. You know, the speed. The speed. The, the speed. Actually, brutality. I mean, speed. <coughs> Speed, you know, speed was actually something which changed everything. Also, Invader, you know, and uh, then Doc joined the band, and we recorded Necrolust, the first demo tape, and then everything started to, to natural evolution for Vader. You know. So now we're trying to bring back this, this uh, the, the the demos recorded like in between '85 and '90, hmm. especially the Morbid Rake, which really like uh, was a, a gate to the world for Vader, you know, because mm. because of this tape we signed a deal with Eric. It was an incredible we album it, Yeah, well. and so, you know, this demo actually is still kind of legendary for, for many fans, you know, who knows it since, since the beginning. Mm. I don't know why. <laughs> this was recorded like for like almost nothing uh, in a studio, like local studio in Poland, in Olsztyn, you know, in, this, in my city. It was absolutely like no equipment or nothing, but we created something like which was a top for us in that time. <laughs> and you know, we, we broke something, you know. I don't know. I'm happy because this demo actually opened, opened the eyes for Polish male scene, the underground scene, also for, I agree. For, 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 for the underground outside of Poland. I mean, actually I, in the West, of course. I mean, I feel that Vader actually opened the floodgates for a lot of uh, new age bands, both in Poland and also in America, because um, you look around, there's a lot of bands that do. Uh, that's, 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 that's what I'm talking about America. It's funny because, you know, actually. Uh, after uh, British, you know, legends like Judas Priest, like Iron Maiden, or Saxon, that was like my big influence at the beginning. Uh, when I started to play guitar and I started to be in Vader, so when we started Vader, me and this Bishop, you know, the, the other guitar player, and uh, then came American bands, like, you know, the Slayer Possessed, exactly, and they actually changed my mind about brutality, speed, and everything. And the funny thing is, because they influenced me a lot with the brutality and then after years after that when I had the opportunity to talk to friends from the bands like in Malabon Creation or D-Side, you know, next day they told me stories about uh, how, how the day somebody broke the, a demo tape called Morbid Trick from Poland, you know, and they played as the, uh, and in some places they were rare selling. And they, they were shocked, and that was like, wow, that fucking amazing. Something that was like, like are you really talking, you're talking shit to me about that, eh? right? And no, that was right. So, so it's it's the music. So it, it means it was like, you know, like it was working like both sides. You know, they were impressing me, and if I had a little bit impression to them, that's man, even better. <laughs> but you know, I was 20 years maybe after I I, I just get this. You know, <laughs> I never ever expected that. Something recorded in deep shit in Poland can be an influence for anything, anybody, especially in the US. <laughs> well, I, I, I feel um, is is I feel there's one album though that actually did inspire a lot of people in. Uh, I, I I'm American myself, but I live in Manchester, UK, and one album that is really popular around there is uh, Necropolis because people love the uh, the Venom cover, the uh, the difference in it. And oh uh, uh, yeah, 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 you know Necropolis is. Uh, Tonight, you'll know why, because we, we're going to bring back the very first Vader album called Necropolis, you know, and this is all the explanation of why I call the album, uh, why that impression and uh, this, you know, connection, the link between uh, the first song and uh, that, you know, particular album recorded, yeah. you know, and uh, it's, that was just a feeling, you know, and Necropolis and... And uh, the cover, the Venom cover, and you know what we did. So, you know, we do covers almost, almost every time we record the album. And uh, I don't care if it's a bonus truck or it's just a regular truck. I don't care. Just I, I feel kind of respect for the music and for everybody, especially for those who influenced me in the past. You know, and we should to keep it running. You know, some some bands have just got forgotten just because like we still focus more or like what's going on now and not what's what was going on in the past and actually the past was something which influenced the future which is now today and we should just keep it like in the classical music you know in the classical music there there's you know, all this this uh, the covers let's say of mozart or beethoven are doing all the time the masters and then this is still impression you know for the others you know if somebody was a good uh, teacher for us why it can be the good teaching music for 
the next generations, right? Of course. Of course, I, it doesn't mean that I want to like do it just to you know to to make somebody copy it or something. It's just a touch, a feeling, you know. Yeah. And uh, why not? You know, mm. I love you know covers. I love the classic. You know, some bands they became classic for metal, and we should you know care about that. Was well, paying homage as well as well as uh, mm. showing that these are the bands inspired you, and you're paying homage to them by playing the song. I guess that's the point. So in the in 2015, what inspires you as a musician uh, now? You know, actually, uh, everything inspires me. It's like I, I can't say like this some something exact thing. This is something that exp like like influenced me so much to record the album. It what, it was one story who who really changed my mind about the future plan for the new album, and that was uh, September 11, and in the US by the way, and all all these you no. Know, Stories about the end of the world who came back and you know, prophecy. Yes, you know, you know the apocalyptic visions and things. And uh, uh, I changed the title into like uh, the revelations. And actually, the 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 bigger the bigger part of of uh, the album was focused on that theme. Actually, the end of the world. Some thinking about that. You know, the, the, because it's, the humans usually think about something which is going to be the end. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. If it's motivating or what, but it is. You know, and for that in that time it was. A motivation to me as well, yeah, to change. But uh, the rest of Vader albums actually, it's, it's most like the big inspiration is, you know, sometimes it's just a movie, you know, sometimes a book I read, you know, sometimes it's just like talking, something, just my feeling, something I just was watching like in my life, you know. It's like everything around me is something that might be an inspiration to write a song, you know. And it's like, this is how it is. It's a life, you know. <laughs> I know how, how cliche it sounds like, but it is. It's just like life, you know. It's like what what, what I do, and what I I'm interested in, you know. I get eyes, ears, touch, everything. I use this, you know, to perform. Emotion, and so. actually, music is music is my expression. Is how I talk to to my fans. This is the language I talk to, you know, with. I, I get so, that. Uh, you know, I mean, with music for me, I use. If I've had a bad day, I just put on a record and I use that to really just drive out all the bad negativity, you know? I, of course, it's, you know, feelings is what we have. And <coughs> the music, the whole art, is like an expression. It's expression of your feelings, you know? Hmm. That's why it's so different. That's why it's good. With all of music as well, it's like a never-ending canvas. You can do whatever you want with it because um, it's just a, a blind canvas that you can just uh, see yeah, what you put can make some up. colors or not. <laughs> So, I mean, um, with the new record, uh, I wanted to ask about the artwork. Um, who was uh, behind that, anyway? I mean, oh, that's a famous person. Joe Pitano. Actually, he was a guy who was like, right, uh, was, uh, he made the covers for, for many, like, legend bands. Like, but I think the Motorhead is, is number one. Because, actually, he created Motorhead. This, this logo, known everything. So, he, he's a man, you know. And, uh, you know, after I received a letter with some playing cards with uh, his artworks and that. Like first I first I thought like, oh this guy might be very much impressed by Motorhead. You know, I didn't even expect, you know, that it might be that guy, you know. So of course if I recognize that Joe Pitano as him, so I I just we just uh, made some calls and you know, you know it's a it's, it's a honor, you know, to, to work together with the guy who makes incredible so many things, you know, in, in the history of music. You know? it's so it's you know it's, it, he's an old guy, but it's, if you talk to him you talk like a f like to you like a friend, you know, and uh, that's why it was fast. I just sent him some tunes, new tunes for Vader, some lyrics, uh, two weeks, and I get some sketches. All of them great. I, I just this is perfect, you know, for the, for the whole album explanation of you can find inside, you know. That's perfect. Incredible. That's incredible. So for the final two questions, I guess, um, where do you see Vader going uh, going from this point on? It depends, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, Steve, you know, after the last album, after uh, I finished the last recording session, so I already start to you know, collect some new ideas for the next album. But um, I work in a way, so I need the time to to just sit and focus on that. So I'm not working just on the way. Sometimes I, I if I've got some some riffs or something, I record it in a tape. But generally, I uh, I work in a studio, so. If I collect everything, all these pieces, you know, and then I need like two weeks something in the studio, then I'm alone and focused, nobody, and it's just I keep it's out quiet, of everybody yeah. and everything around, 
and I put everything in the paper. No distractions and all that. This is a simple, uh, your time, no distractions, just uh, you, your music, and whatever ideas. Yeah, this, you know, for example, Spider works different way. You know, Spider, he he's almost ready with everything, like uh, when he enters the studio. He's got, the song is almost ready. We just sometimes discuss about, like, the scheme, main scheme, maybe, like, to add a chorus, maybe, like, just to, to sort of this or that. But main thing is done. I know, I, I can't work like that, you know. So I think just the first album was recorded like that, and only because we were like playing these songs for over 10 years, you know. So wow. <laughs> that's why it was just like fulfilling. But the, but then I, I never actually had like the ready songs like in, in the studios. I, I just like to work in the studio on that, you know. Of course. For some people, it's weird because like, how can I do something in the studio? You know, this is you know. I'm not asking somebody who's dealing with computer how he how he can do it. Yeah. It's like and for me it's like you know magic, you know. <laughs> for him it's just like easy. The same here. I'm just a composer, you know. For me it's like easy to think, you know, because I live uh, with this, you know. This is my life. I right, guess the final question <laughs> is, uh, do you have any uh, anything to say to the fans listening? Can we get? Do you have any uh, any uh, final words for the uh, uh, fans right. listening out there? Actually, I don't like to say the final words. It's not. I, I don't know. Why. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just, I, 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 I'm no, thinking I'm in like I'm chapters kidding. here. I don't know why, but I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, first of all, I always uh, glad and uh, always thankful for all those fans supporting us for so many years. And uh, I'm. Uh, I think that the biggest success of Vader is that we still have fans. We still active band, and we not like a band. All one, another one. All band who play for old pricks. So uh, I am maybe older than usually musicians in a death metal bands, but I'm glad that uh, what I'm talking about is still active and is still ready even for young and new generation, you know, metal freaks. So this is the biggest success. So we're here and people coming, and uh, we don't need to be famous, you know. We still got friends who respect us. That's the best can happen for every metal band. You're strong as the band you are, and I personally feel that Vader is still in the 21st century. Myself as a musician, I'm, I play in a death metal band myself, and Vader has always inspired me, both vocally thank and also guitar-wise. And I just want to say, on my part, thank you for your music. Thank you. Thank you for your words. Well, and this is Michael J. Coyle. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned.